manufacturing sector, turning the tide on decades of disinvestment and securing the future for clean cars and electrification. Our success in securing the new EV investments was the first of its kind in Canada. Since then, that success has snowballed into more than $16 billion in EV supply chain investments in under two years, repositioning Canada as a major player in both gas-powered cars, components, as well as the electric vehicle of the future. One of the earliest of these success stories is unfolding right now at GM Canning Facility in Ingersoll, led by our members at Local 88. In January 2021, our union negotiated a $1 billion investment to transform the plant into Canada's first commercial electric vehicle manufacturing facility. It's a transition that has breathed new life into the facility, maintaining good union jobs and collective bargaining rights. But it also serves as a window into both the opportunities and challenges facing workers in the EV shift. This video is a story of workers affected by these changes, one that will reproduce itself many times over as Canada continues its path to net zero. It's a story of hope, of renewal, and of solidarity. It's a story of how Uniform must continue to fight to ensure working people's interests are at the heart of the inevitable climate change transitions. Before we roll the video, I want to introduce the delegate to Jamie Kirkpatrick of the Blue Green Canada and invite him to say a few words. Jamie, you can, in a minute, in a minute, you can stand up. <laughs> Jamie is the Senior Program Manager at Blue Green Canada and Alliance of Trade Unions Environmental Groups. Blue Green is not only the catalyst and the sponsor of this video, but is a staunch ally in the fight for workers and climate change. Jamie? Well, thanks very much, John. And uh, it's, it's an honor to be here um, to help share the story of uniform workers in and around Ingersoll, Ontario. At Blue Green Canada, we work to promote solutions to environmental issues that help keep and create good jobs and build a sustainable economy. And that's what's happening at the candy plant, and it's a sign of things to come. Our hope is that members and allies gathered from across the country today will, will see some hope and possibility in the story of the courageous workers in Ingersoll. From uh, facing outsourcing of their products, the global pandemic, to the ensuing shortage of semiconductors and chips, these folks have been bouncing between a rock and a hard place for the past two years. But they kept going, and they're still standing, and now they're blazing a new trail. These workers are building America's first fleet of fully electric delivery vans. They are literally helping to deliver the future that we want, and Blue Green hopes to be there in December when the first vans roll off the line. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to invite Brother Mike Van Bokel, plant chairperson of Local 88 members at CAMI, to say a few words. Mike played an instrumental role in these negotiations and moving this program forward for our members. Mike? Thank you, John. I stand here this morning with fellow Local 88 members behind me, Mark G. Rachel Christopher, and Charlotte Johnson. There's not much more to be said. In 2021, we began a journey, one that would see our plant become the first assembly plant in Canada to produce electric vehicles. But more importantly, it was a journey to show the world that Canada has the technology and skills and workforce to be a world leader in electrification. I want to thank Jamie and the team of Blue Green for allowing us the opportunity to tell our story. I want to thank the Union Unifor National for their constant support. And above all, I want to thank the members of Local 88, 
some of who, who are present here today. Thank you for having the foresight and belief to not only embrace the future, but helping to lead our plant, the supply chain, and our communities to a future that encompasses greener jobs and a better tomorrow. Here's our story. We are one year out from our next round of contract talks with the Detroit Three, and I assure you we will continue to do what we started in 2020, making ambitious and transformative gains for our members and building the foundation of a strong, sustainable auto sector into the future and beyond. policies, our labor market policies, all the work together to deliver the benefits of good local union jobs. That's why today we'll be releasing publicly our new Unifor Auto Policy led by our Auto and IPS Councils. It contains a set of detailed recommendations that repositions Canada as a powerhouse in the auto sector. It will drive our political action agenda as we prepare ourselves for another historic round of bargaining in 2023. So let's get at it. Thank you, John, and the Unifor Auto Council. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Local 88. 